Hey everyone! So this video is about book recommendations for beginners. So what I'm going to do is make a bunch of book recommendations in different areas that I get asked about a lot. Um, so let's jump in. So you might wonder why this video? Why did you decide to make this video? Well, I get a lot of emails, messages, just people asking me for book recommendations about various things, usually, usually related to philosophy, often related to sort of areas that I specialize in. And what I wanted to do was just kind of make a video where I cover recommendations on the topics that I get asked about the most. So I can just kind of point people to a bunch of book recommendations all in one place. So I'm going to talk about epistemology recommendations, philosophy of religion recommendations, more specific topics like Pascal's Wager and a bunch more. So get pumped. Um, so this video is focused on beginners. So people probably not like, I mean, obviously people like grad students or professors will read these books and get things out of them, but it's more focused on people who are newer to philosophy or just starting to study philosophy. Um, people that want more introductory resources on these topics. So I'm doing a video for beginners. If you want a similar video with more advanced recommendations, or you read some of these and you're like, I want to go deeper, whatever, let me know in the comments. Um, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Um, I do, in general, take recommendations for videos. So if there's a specific or a specific topic I don't cover that you want me to cover in, a, in another video, let me know. Okay, <clears throat> so the basic way I structured this is I was like, so you want to get started in, you're kind of a beginner in a certain topic and you want an intro to that, uh, what would I recommend? So the first area is epistemology. You want an intro to general epistemology, sort of an overview of some of the main topics, main debates. Okay, my personal number one recommendation is this book. This is a book I actually use in my epistemology classes. It's by Jennifer Nagel. Jennifer is awesome. And it's called Knowledge, A Very Short Introduction. Um, what I like about it is it covers a lot of the big and main topics in epistemology, but it's very accessible. It's very easy to read. So here's a table of contents. Um, I think I've done all of the chapters with my students, maybe except for chapter seven, um, but they're all really good. Um, just great introductions to each of these topics. And seven and eight kind of cover, uh, you know, a little more recent topics, but also talks about things like skepticism, what is knowledge, get your cases, a bunch of really important and fundamental stuff that I think is super important as like a foundation for epistemology. You can go deeper in any of these topics, but even if you're interested in other things in epistemology, like my dissertation was on belief and credence, I think still having a basis in a lot of this stuff was super helpful. So. Highly recommend this book as an introduction to epistemology. There's other good books that are good too. There's a Feldman book a lot of people like, but I personally think this one's the most accessible and it's my personal favorite. Okay, moving on. Philosophy of religion. All right, philosophy of religion is a really big topic. Um, and so I actually picked a book that covers a little bit more ground here. If I was teaching a philosophy of religion class, this is the book I would use. So that is this book. It's by Mike Ray, who is actually a philosopher at Notre Dame, and then Poyman, who is another philosopher. And it's actually not, they actually didn't write the whole thing, they just edited it. Let me show you the table of contents. I know it's a lot. Some of the table of contents are really big because this covers a lot. But what I love about this book is that it's written by a ton of different people. So people writing in their area of expertise. And notice that it covers um, like more historical things, like they have, this is from St. Augustine, um, but then they'll have, and like, like Anselm, Kant, right, Aquinas, but then they have much more recent things like Planiga and William Rowe, um, and so it just has a bunch of different cool topics, so the concept of God is the first one, so if God exists, what would God be like, then it gives, has a part on arguments for the existence of God, and then evil and hiddenness, which are two of the biggest challenges for theism, two of the best arguments against the existence of God. And then if we continue, it talks about religious experiences, miracles, and then a whole section on faith and reason. So which would be like the rationality of religious belief and religious commitment. So there's a lot of really cool stuff here. Notice they have 
uh, Pascal's wager here, William James, they have WK Clifford. I mean, they, there's so much good stuff. And this is just a great thing. And one thing that's nice about this too is that you wouldn't necessarily have to read it cover to cover, but you can kind of go to various sections or chapters based on what you're interested in. But this is just a really comprehensive overview um, with a lot of the really big, important and influential arguments. So again, I'm making this recommendation to someone who's a beginner, someone who wants an introduction to the main stuff. And obviously every single one of these chapters, there's been tons of stuff written on that and tons of stuff where you can go deeper. But I think this is a really helpful and accessible um, introduction to philosophy of religion. So that's my recommendation for an intro to philosophy of religion. Next topic is religious epistemology. So what is my number one recommendation for someone who's a beginner and wants something in religious epistemology? It's this book. So this book is called Knowledge and Belief and it was written by Plantinga. Plantinga is one of the most important Christian philosophers um, who has lived recently. And um, what this book actually is, is it's a more accessible, more popular level summary of some of um, Plantinga's other work specifically warranted Christian belief. But there's actually a, a trilogy. There's three different books that Plantinga wrote about epistemology in general and then religious epistemology in particular. And so this is kind of a popular level version of a lot of Plantinga's work. So the table of contents, it's not um, super overwhelming. It's more like the Nagel book than like the philosophy of religion textbook that I recommended. Um, but it just, it, it kind of goes through planning as epistemology, how planning as epistemology, um, implications it has for the rationality of religious belief, faith, and then some various defeaters to the Christian worldview. So I highly recommend this book as someone wanting kind of an introduction to religious epistemology. There's lots of things I could have recommended here and obviously planning as, uh, you know, only one particular view, but I think this is just a really, planning as views are super important and influential. And so if I had to pick one book in religious epistemology for a beginner, this would be my number one recommendation. Okay, moving on. Pascal's Wager. So a lot of my research is on Pascal's Wager and there's a lot of interesting stuff that's been written on it, but for a popular level book, I think some of you will probably guess, my number one recommendation is Taking Pascal's Wager by Mike Rota. So I like this book because it is written at a level that I think someone without a ton of background or expertise in philosophy can understand, but it will also teach you a bunch of other stuff like about decision theory. It goes into evidence for theism and the existence of God. And even at the end, um, well, maybe I'll move to the table of contents. Um, at the end, there's even some kind of um, like case studies about what a commitment to God looks like. So basically the book's divided into three parts. And <clears throat> I kind of put the main argument of the book here. One thing I love about Mike Rota is his writing is really clear. And so he basically, argues, look, here's like what the book is about. So part one defends this. If Christianity has at least a 50% chance of being true, then it's rational to commit to living a Christian life. And so um, that's really what chapters sort of one through four are about. And that's the most kind of Pascalian. So if you're super, super interested in, you know, Pascal's wager in particular, then go check out part one um, of this book. But I think part two is awesome too. So then in part two, he says Christianity does have at least a 50% chance of being true. So he starts off with sort of arguments for God's existence, um, a version of the fine tuning argument, and then moves into arguments for Christianity in particular. And I really like his version of the resurrection argument. It's a little bit different. Um, and actually Jordan Hampton, who runs a channel called The Analytic Christian, did a like 20, 25 minute video summarizing Mike Rhoda's version of the resurrection argument. So if you want like a video version of it, go check that out. But I do recommend reading this book. Um, and so the conclusion of the book is that it's rational to commit to living a Christian life. So I think this is my number one recommendation for a popular level, bo popular level book on Pascal's Wager. All right, I wanted to include faith in this video but this was actually a really hard one, um, partially because there isn't, at least that I could find, someone tell me if I'm wrong, tell me in the comments if you know of something that I'm not aware of, but I couldn't really find a good popular level book that's about faith from a philosophical standpoint by a philosopher. Um, there are books written about the philosophy of faith uh, that are higher level, not introductory, um, and then there are more theology books about faith. So I ended up going kind of with that second category uh, and I picked this book. I was actually part of an author meets critics session 
um, about this book. It's by Matthew Bates. He's super nice, really great scholar. Um, and this book is definitely about Christian faith and it's definitely from a theological perspective. So it doesn't really fit well into the mold of a lot of the other books I'm recommending, which are more general and more from a philosophical perspective, but I really liked this book. I thought it was really thought provoking. Um, it's something that academics can appreciate, but it's also something that you can kind of pick up even if you don't have a ton of background on it. So if you're interested in religious faith or Christian faith, I really do recommend this book, but it is written from a Christian perspective and it is really more about the theology side of things and the philosophy side of things. So honestly, it kind of made me want to write a more popular level book on faith from a more philosophical perspective when I realized like, I don't know if I have a great recommendation for this. But again, if you if you have something to recommend, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, here's, a, here's the kind of table of contents and Bates basically argues that we should understand faith as something like allegiance. And this actually, this does parallel um, view, like philosophical views of faith. I think John Convig has kind of a similar view of faith. Faith is an allegiance to an ideal. Um, but, you know, Bates goes through a bunch of arguments from scripture, talking about what allegiance is. Um, and then also it's just practical. It kind of tells us, well, if faith is allegiance, what does that mean for our lives? So I enjoyed this book a lot. I had fun kind of commenting on it. Um, so some of you all might enjoy it too. Okay, so what's my number one recommendation for an introduction to philosophy in general? <laughs> um, this is a hard one. Philosophy is a huge topic and I recommended, I ended up recommending a huge and kind of expensive book, but I think this book is really great. It's really comprehensive. Um, if I was doing like an intro to philosophy class, I would probably either use this book or at least excerpts from the book. There's probably too much to cover in one class. I'll show you the table of contents. It's massive, but um, this is a Norton introduction to philosophy. It's edited by a number of great philosophers and it's so comprehensive. It just covers everything. So here's some of the table of contents. Does God exist? It's kind of like the philosophy religion book I mentioned. One thing that I really like about it is it has more of the historical stuff, but then also some more recent stuff. So it has Anselm and Aquinas, but then it has like Roger White and Eleanor Stump and Laura Bouchak and some of these more recent people, uh, Alan Hayek. Al Hayek was actually my advisor at, at ANU. He's an amazing philosopher. So some, some really great, a really great mixture between more recent people, but also some of the historical stuff as well. So it starts off in the philosophy of religion. Does God exist? Is it reasonable to believe in God, especially without evidence? Pascal's wager, of course, is in there and then moves to epistemology. So what is knowledge? How can you know various things? What we haven't observed, your mind or another mind? How can we know about the external world? So, and then from epistemology, <clears throat> it moves on to metaphysics and philosophy of mind, talking about is the mind material? What is consciousness? What exists, period? Um, I had to, I actually did, I think, cut off some parts of it because it's just so long. Um, and then it goes to ethics. So personal identity, it's kind of a topic at the intersection of ethics and metaphysics. Um, gender and race stuff, super interesting topic. I taught a class on social philosophy where we went over some of this stuff. And I think it's just a really, really interesting topic in philosophy. So Sally Hasslinger's in there. Um, do we have free will? Huge topic in metaphysics slash ethics. Uh, and then straight ethics. So what is the right thing to do? A lot of this stuff is more uh, applied ethics, but then it also moves to other questions in ethics. So the importance of intentions, which moral theory is correct. So utilitarianism, virtue ethics, Kantianism, is morality objective? Why do what's right? What's the meaning of life? And then finally, political philosophy. I cut a couple of the chapters off at the end, but how can the state be justified? Actually super interesting debate. Um, I read Mike Humer's book on this and really, really, really good stuff. I really enjoy this question, The Value of Liberty. So this book is just super comprehensive, lots of good stuff, good mix of historical and contemporary. So I highly recommend it for kind of a general introduction to philosophy. And again, it's kind of something you could get the book and then read various chapters, don't necessarily have to read in order, but just lots of good stuff in there. Okay. I actually get asked about logic books a lot. A lot of people are interested in logic, want to know more about logic. I actually have a video that I think is like half an hour introduction to uh, propositional quantifier and modal logic. So that's a good sort of video if you want a place to start in logic. But if you want to go a little bit deeper, you want a book in logic, this is my number one recommendation. So it's called Classical Logic and its Rabbit Holes, a first course 
philosophy professors that I know that teach logic rave about this book. And almost everyone I know says this is by far the best book. So I'm not saying there are other good books out there. I'm sure there are, but this one becomes highly recommended from a lot of people. And it's basically just, I mean, it's basically just an introduction to propositional logic at first. And then the second half talks about predicate logic or quantifier logic. So, you know, it goes through truth tables, goes through, you know, translations of various logical terms, derivation rules. Um, so I think chapters one through four are propositional logic. Notice the red, those are all exercises you can do. One thing about logic is you really can't, you really have to be doing exercises to get it. And even in my critical thinking class, we do like a week on like logic stuff. And I'm like, you guys, if you're going to get this, you have to be actively doing exercises. So it's not really something you can just kind of like read a chapter about like metaphysics or epistemology. Like you really need to be actively learning. I mean, active learning is probably better in general, but especially for logic. So this book has a ton of exercises. And then the second half, like I said, is really about predicate logic. Um, so, so lots of really helpful stuff. And again, this will be at an introductory level. So it doesn't really go into modal logic or higher order logics or, you know, some of these meta logic, that, that kind of stuff. It really keeps it um, at a more basic level. But I think this is a really helpful book and a good thing to go through if you want a strong um, grounding in logic, which I highly recommend, especially for those interested in philosophy, formal education and philosophy, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so here's kind of one, I think we're nearing the end, but I threw it at the end because there's such a great book to recommend here. So I am interested in formal epistemology. Formal epistemology is sort of a type of epistemology that models our beliefs like a probability. Uh, so the, sometimes this is called credence. You can think about it like a confidence level where you could be 100% confident something's true, 0% confident something's true, and then all these confidence levels in between, right? Um, it's usually modeled in formal epistemology on a scale from zero to one. Zero is certainty something's false. One is certainty something's true. So formal epistemology asks questions about the nature of credence. Credence is just this attitude we take that's modeled on a scale from zero to one. Um, what makes a credence rational? Decision theory is part of formal epistemology, which is closely related to stuff on Pascal's wager. And I actually recommend if you're interested in Pascal's wager, you really need a strong background in decision theory. So a lot of important stuff um, related to covered by formal epistemology. And the good news is there's this amazing book coming out as an introduction to formal epistemology. Um, and I don't even know if this cover is finalized yet, but I did get it off of Mike's Facebook. So I think it's on Facebook. Hopefully it's okay if I show it to you. Um, love these covers, by the way. So cool. Um, but it's a two-part, two-volume series, I guess, um, called Fundamentals of Bayesian Epistemology. It's by Mike Teitelbaum. He teaches philosophy at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And so the first is kind of just an introduction to credences. And then the second is arguments, challenges, and alternatives. And uh, both are great. So I've read, I think most of the first, I'm not sure how much of the second I've read because I sort of read it as a PDF actually with a reading group um, back in grad school. So this book has been in the works for a long time, but it's just super well done and it really balances rigor with accessibility. So I, I really cannot highly recommend this book enough. We needed a accessible introduction to formal epistemology and this is, this is just an awesome book. So um, he sent me this table of contents pretty recently, so I think it's pretty accurate, although it might be slightly tweaked for when the final version of the book comes out, which I think it comes out in 2022, um, although I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it does. Um, so, you know, it starts off with just kind of introducing credences, the distinction between beliefs and credences, probabilities, what is, what is it for something to be a probability function, what does that even mean, what are sort of the rules or axioms of probability, conditional credences, updating by conditionalization. So that's how we change our credences when we get new evidence. Um, other things that might make a credence rational, confirmation theory, um, decision theory, like we mentioned, super important. Lots of really cool and interesting debates in decision theory. Um, talks about arguments for Bayesianism. So Bayesianism is a theory of rational credence that basically says two things. 
one, that credences should be coherent. So if you have a 0.9 credence that it will rain tomorrow, then you should have a 0.1 credence that it won't rain tomorrow. So your credences should cohere with each other. And then the second thing is that you need to update them by conditionalization. And what that means is when you get new evidence, you should change your credences accordingly. So you shouldn't just ignore new evidence, right? <laughs> um, so that's what Bayesianism is. And so this goes through a number of arguments for Bayesianism representation theorems, Dutch book arguments, and accuracy arguments, really three of the biggest arguments. Um, and then just some other cool topics in formal epistemology. So some of this stuff is just, just fun puzzles that sort of formal epistemologists like to talk about. Um, the sleeping beauty problem, logical omniscience, and then the problem of the priors. I, I don't necessarily have time to go into all of those here, but lots of really cool stuff. So I highly recommend this book. Um, I've actually considered maybe taking parts of this book and making some specific videos about them because I just think this book is so well done. Obviously, I would need to give Mike proper credit, but I think having some video versions of some of some of these topics would be really, really helpful. So that is my strong recommendation for formal epistemology. Definitely keep an eye on that book. Uh, I think, again, it's going to be coming out in 2022, so keep an eye out for it. Um, so I want to just wrap up by kind of reminding everyone some other resources if you're interested in philosophy and you want to learn more about it. It's easy to Google stuff and just read random blogs. Don't do that. There's good resources out there that you can know are high quality. So focus on these. Um, there's 1000 Word Philosophy. That is a website with lots of free articles on a ton of philosophical topics, and they're all a thousand words or less. So they're short and they're accessible, but they're well done too. So for kind of the most beginning phase of things, I recommend a thousand word philosophy. Then there's philosophy compass. So philosophy compass has a also a strict word limit, but I think that's 5,000 words. So they're going to be a little bit longer, a little bit more in depth, not quite as accessible as a thousand word philosophy, but still on the accessible side. And they're there to summarize various debates. Then there's the internet encyclopedia of philosophy. So those articles are going to be even longer, but um, on the more accessible side. So the IEP, I think they're uh, audience is supposed to be an undergraduate philosophy major. So it's not supposed to be grad level. It's supposed to be pretty accessible for people. And then the most advanced, but still I think really helpful is the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, which is a lot of philosophers kind of go to when they want an overview of a certain topic. Um, and then finally, I just want to recommend, remind everyone. So I did a video with Justin Mooney about doing philosophical research on the analytic Christian. And I think this is also helpful if you want to um, learn what does philosophical research look like from two people that are, you know, publishing and, ha you know, have or working on PhDs in philosophy. How do we recommend finding answers to philosophical questions, learning about what's being done in, in and by philosophers? So go check that video out if you're interested in this. Um, it's on the analytic Christian website or YouTube channel, I mean. And then finally, um, I don't know everything, right? So I would love to hear if you have other book recommendations on some of the topics that I mentioned. So if there's other books, um, I know the faith one, I kind of recommended a more theology book. Uh, so if you have other book recommendations or things you think people would do well to know about, let me know. Let me know in the comments. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Talk to you all later.